Hello, everybody. Um, in today's episode, I'm actually not going to go over anything new or anything that we've done before, actually. Instead, I'm just going to use this time to um, talk about a switch that I've made and a switch that maybe uh, might be useful for you as well. So here, if you look right here, um, I'm running a new setup that's completely different than IntelliJ. And the reason is um, I'm not using IntelliJ anymore. So there are two reasons um, as to why I switched from IntelliJ to this, which is Atom Text Editor. Um, for, first reason is that IntelliJ is just, it's, it's a huge application, you know, three to four gigabytes. And if you're not really using Java all the time, or it's not something that you're studying uh, intently, then that's a, that's a big commitment that you're making uh, space-wise. And especially if you have an older machine, that it, it could definitely uh, mean a lot. And so Atom, even with all of its plugins and customization and whatnot, it doesn't even come to being half the size of IntelliJ. So it's a very uh, relatively lightweight application, and that's why I started using it. And the second reason is, if you do plan on using Java or anything computer science related l later on, um, for a job interview, you're not always guaranteed a uh, a laptop or a computer machine that has a three to four, maybe even five gigabyte IDE installed in it. Instead, they're probably going to give you a laptop saying like, hey, Java's installed on it already. You know, show us what you can do. And, and you're expected to run things from command line or, or terminal. And you're expected to write code in Notepad or, or text edit or whatever you use that's basically pre-installed with the machine. And so it's a much more realistic uh, approach because that's how you, you know, land the job, you get the interview and whatnot. Uh, I mean, you know, once you get the job, then, then if you want to use an IDE, go for it. But this is just a much more practical and realistic view. And so keeping that in mind, I've uh, made the switch. And today I'm just going to show you how we can utilize this and, and set up a Java environment. So if you look over here, I have no project and uh, I have no file that I'm working on. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to make a uh, folder somewhere that um, we can keep all of our code and, and, and just have everything that we need over there. So if you're on Mac, you got to open up Finder and Windows. Uh, you can open up Windows Explorer. I'm just going to search over here, Finder. And that'll open up over here. And I've already made a folder called Java Basics 2, and that's all I need. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take this folder, drag it on over here to Adam. If I drop it over here, it's going to uh, open this Java Basics 2. So I've already made this folder. Um, that's why I have this file, but I'm going to delete this file. Just so you can see that this is a fresh folder over here. There's nothing in, in this folder, and I'm just going to stay over here. Now, um, this is just a part of the initialization, so you don't need to worry about this. Basically, you have a Java Basics 2 folder over here. Now, you want to add a new file, for example. And so, the way that we can do that is uh, we can right-click over here and write new file. But then, it's going to ask for the path, and we don't really want that. So, the workaround is we open up Finder again, and uh, we have this. The, we know that this is an empty folder. So if we go back to Atom and uh, Command N for Mac, Control N for Windows, and we can just open up a new file. Now I'm going to save this as uh, test.java. I'm going to hit enter. And uh, it saves in my directory now. If I look on over here to Finder, it's right here, test.java. And um, right here as well and has the little Java icon that's just with my configuration so now we know we're working cool now right off the bat you can see that uh, unlike IntelliJ we don't even have a public class generated so we need to write that on our own so I'm gonna write public uh, class test and then I'm just gonna tag the end so end of uh, class test and then I'm going to write our main method public static void main um, string, block space, and use arguments, and then just uh, convention wise tag this end of main method. And now here I'm just going to have a simple print statement that makes sure uh, we're working. So, hi, 
and the sword. And then end that with a semicolon. Now, unlike IntelliJ, this atom does not autosave. You can add a plugin or a uh, you know a package for that, but right now I'm just gonna work off the base value. So it, it gives me this little blue uh, dot that says, hey, you haven't saved yet. So just be sure to save that periodically. Now, if I if I want to run this, right, I have to do two things. I need to compile it first, and then I need to run it. So for Windows, you have to open up Command Prompt. For Mac, you need to open up Terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and search for Terminal. And here I have a brand new window in Terminal. I'm just going to hit Clear to get rid of all that gibberish. Cool. Now, the first thing that I want to do is uh, I want to get into the right directory or folder because I could have multiple test.java files. And if I'm in, not in the right folder, then it's not going to execute properly. It, my laptop doesn't know which one to run, which one to compile. And so um, I need to change directory. And so for Mac and Linux, the uh, command for that would be cd and then space. And then you want to get the directory's um, name, the whole path, right? So I'm going to open up Finder again and navigate to my folder so it's under my code and I have this. So I can do two things. I can right click and then I can hold down um, option and it'll say copy Java basics to its path name. I can click it like that and then paste it in. Or what I can do is I can just drag this over here and it opens up. It gives me the entire directory over here. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I have this, I'm gonna hit enter. Hit enter and then cool. Now I know I'm in the Java basics 2 folder and this is my user. That's the user I'm logged in right now. Now that I know I'm in here, I have to compile it first. So what compiling code does is essentially the machine, my laptop, can't read uh, Java. Instead, it needs machine code. So compiling it turns that Java code into machine code. And I'll show you how that works as well. So first we want to write Java, C for Java compile, and then test dot, uh, dot Java. And so that just uh, signifies that, hey, I want to compile this um, this file. And so I hit enter. And if there are no issues, it's going to uh, come back just with this Java Basics 2. Same thing that we saw before. Cool. Now I know it's compiled. So I'm going to go on over to my Atom file over here, open up the little project tab, and I can see that there's a test.class file. And this is the machine code that we don't really need to worry about. But I'm just showing you that that's how it works. So. I have this uh, compiled um, test.class file and now I'm going to go back to my terminal and now I want to run it. So to run it is just Java and then test. I don't need to add the .java extension at the back. I'm going to hit enter and it prints out, hi, this worked. So now you know that that worked. Now <clears throat> let's see what happens if we include an issue, right, the syntax error, simple. So I'm going to take off the semicolon and in order to make sure that you know we're getting a different file or a different output, I'm gonna write instead of hi, I'm gonna write hello. This worked, right? And then I'll be sure to save it. And then let's open up terminal again. Now I'm going to uh, compile it. So instead of retyping it, what I can do is I can just hit the up arrow, and then it'll bring up my last typed uh, commands. So Java C test Java. I'm gonna hit enter. And it is going to, yep, give me an error. It says test.java3, which means line number three. Um, error, semicolon expected, and it's showing me exactly what it was, it was expected, right? So here it says the error is in this section, right? It says, hello, this worked. Now let's say I ignore this and I try to run it. So if I run the file, essentially what it's doing is it's running the test.class file because that's what my computer understands, right? So if I run this, instead of printing hello this worked, it's going to print hi this worked. And the reason being, the last successful um, time we compiled the file was when we wrote hi this worked. When we wrote hello this worked, the file did not compile properly, and so the current uh, test.class file that we have has hi this worked. And in order to uh, show that, I'm gonna hit enter, and it's gonna print, yep, Hi, this worked. And so that's how you know that, hey, there's been a compilation issue, didn't compile properly, and so um, I'm missing something. And it, it'll usually, you know, tell you like line numbers and errors and whatnot. Um, and so it's fine. It's essentially what IntelliJ did, but uh, instead of IntelliJ just made the terminal window a part of the entire IDE, and you didn't have to compile it separately. 
So I did that work for you. It's just a few extra steps and it could save you a lot of uh, space and maybe um, you know an extra skill in the future as well. So with that being said, I'm just going to end the video over here. Um, I do want to note that I will link in the description the link to Adam in case you want to download and check it out. And I have uh, designed this, um, let's see, this syntax theme, if you will. And so if you're interested in, in you know, using this, if you want to use this, um, I will link that as well. So you can just install that as a package in uh, the future in case you check out Adam. Thank you.